Who are you at your best moments? How do you feel inside on those days? What is your behavior like? What actions do you take? How do you treat the people around you? Exploring Stoic Virtue will begin to help you understand what personal excellence truly means to you. You'll realize that understanding and doing what really matters can be challenging. Often, what truly matters goes against our desires, our selfishness, and even some of our established behaviors. In this video, we're going to discuss how to act like a Stoic by incorporating the four Stoic virtues into our daily lives. And if this is the first time we're meeting, I want to tell you what the viewers of the channel already know, this video reached you because someone liked it before, so help us in this chain. Be the cause of this video reaching more people. Like, leave your comment, and share it in the family group. In Stoicism, virtue means excellence, or being the best example of who you can be. It's cliché, but the phrase fits, being your best version. And the Stoics used many metaphors to explain and describe virtue. One of my favorite metaphors comes from Cicero, who said that the Stoics referred to virtue as ripening. A ripe fruit is at its peak, offering the best of itself, but no fruit stays ripe forever, the state of ripeness lasts for a short time. The Stoics compared moral virtue to the ripening process of a fruit to highlight that virtue is not a state definitively achieved that remains with us without further efforts. Virtue manifests in the here and now, we can do the right thing now and make a mistake soon after. Acting kindly depends on choosing to do good at every moment. Pierre Haddad, a philosopher, speaks about the virtues in this way. Wisdom, the science of what should or should not be done. Courage, the science of what should or should not be tolerated. Justice, the science of what should and should not be distributed. Temperance, the science of what should or should not be chosen. The early Stoics saw their teachings as a science, but being virtuous is not something you learn with an exact formula, it's more like an art. You can learn the basics of being good, but you need to put in effort and practice to truly improve and demonstrate this in your actions, within the reality in which you live today. Stoic practices help us become better. We learn many important things from them, but it's only worthwhile if we use this learning to reach our maximum potential. It's like a library filled with books that hold the knowledge of many generations. Great thinkers have left their insights, discoveries, and understandings about life there. However, if no one reads these books, understands, and applies this knowledge in their own life, the entire library is of no value. Focusing on virtue morally strengthens us to apply what we know and are learning, and this teaches us the true art of living. The Stoics insisted that the four virtues are not separate, as if distinct or different, but that one depends on another, as a whole. You cannot have just a mental model based on justice without being courageous, or act with 100% wisdom and never use temperance. Each person will understand and demonstrate these qualities in their own way, through their actions, attitudes, and words. But practicing these four virtues every day will certainly bring benefits and lead you to think, speak, and do what is right. Have courage, keep calm, practice self-control, speak, and act wisely. Thinking about the different forms of virtues helps us better understand the choices we can make, so let's learn about these characteristics and how to bring them into our daily lives. Wisdom Stoics consider wisdom as a practical art, which is why it is often translated as prudence. We demonstrate wisdom when we make thoughtful and balanced choices that contribute to the flow of life. The main function of wisdom is to direct you towards good, helping to focus on positive thoughts, opinions, healthy desires, and avoid what is harmful. Another task of wisdom is to guide your life choices, helping you decide between doing this or that, choosing this path or that one. Wisdom demands constant mental attention, meaning it's important to make an effort to analyze how you think. Our thoughts lead to our actions, actions over time become habits, and our habits and choices shape our character. Understanding our thought process is crucial because we often neglect this and believe that our thoughts are lawless land. We think we can think anything we want without consequence. But this is just a wrong conclusion from our ignorance. I thought of two heavy examples to discuss this, a thief, 
for instance, steals whenever he finds an opportunity. But it's not just the moment or the need that drives him to do this. These thoughts have been in his head for a long time, fueled by the desire to show off, possess things, have easy money, not work. Believing that people who are careless on the street deserve to be robbed and much more. How many times do these thoughts occur in that person's head before committing a crime? Many. In another example, let's think about Alex, who is married but, despite his commitment to his wife, cannot Join stay our faithful for long at Buy Me A Coffee. Alex looks at with and a thinks about his female colleagues and have a voice in, in our community. Way, at the Every gym, coffee fuels in the cafe, our mission to share wisdom. He frequents. Be our pillar, make a at difference every today. Moment, he thinks, analyzes, and desires other women. Even if Alex wants to maintain self-control, at some point, he will fall into temptation. Certainly, in both examples, there are deeper reasons that lead people to act this way, but these two cases help us understand that what we think leads us to action. If we have thoughts of envy, fear, distress. At some point, we will act accordingly. No one has the power to hear our thoughts, which is why we feel free to think whatever we want, but they don't reside in our head for free. Somehow, what we think, even the most hidden thoughts, are either helping us evolve or dragging us down. Practicing wisdom means paying attention to our mental process and understanding that we do not have to immediately accept the first reaction that comes to our mind. We can take a moment between what we initially feel and what we decide to do next. When we focus on the discipline of ascent, we see how this practice is closely linked to this virtue, showing how we can choose our responses more carefully. When you face complicated situations or delicate moments, change your mental conversation by simply asking yourself, am I handling this wisely? This question is simple, but it redirects the focus of your mind, and you gain self-control and objectivity. Wisdom has always been valued by the Stoics, and we can practice it at every moment of our lives, starting with what we think before it becomes speech, an action, and brings us difficult consequences to handle. Courage Courage is about mastering your fears, rather than letting them control you. It's the opposite of being cowardly. Courage is one of the virtues associated with the discipline of desire, which motivates us to seek what is truly valuable, not just material things, but to fight for what is right. When we do this, we gain strength to face difficult situations. The Stoics divided courage into nobility, endurance, confidence, joy, and effort. Think about some things you avoid. Like asking for a raise, even when you work hard and deliver results at your job, or taking responsibility, truly committing to your goals, or responding to a friend or some situation. I used to avoid emotional conflicts and all situations that made me feel anxious, such as arguments or misunderstandings. To avoid dealing with these, I pretended everything was fine or did just enough to keep things as they were. This poor strategy eventually brought negative results to my personal and professional life. Problems accumulated until, inevitably, the situation became critical. Stoicism made me realize that I cannot control the reactions of others. I can only control how I think and act. I learned that if I act rightly, it's easier for people to respond positively. This gave me more courage to face situations. Instead of avoiding others' reactions, I began to avoid cowardice, hesitation, and fear within myself. As we master our fears, we gain the courage to act. And, when I started to make an effort and give my best in every situation, I began to see life in a new way. If we do what is right for us and try to accept situations as they are, nothing will truly harm us. Seneca once wrote, something that was already expected brings a lesser shock. A technique used by the Stoics is to imagine the worst that could happen in a situation. This helps to clear the mind. Thus, if we face something similar later, we can better focus on acting correctly and virtuously. Think about what you have been avoiding. Why does this situation worry you? What is under your control? What isn't? What would be the best way to face this challenge? And, after surviving it, who would you be? How much courage will you discover in yourself? Justice The idea of justice in Stoicism is broader than our common definition of justice, 
which means it's not just about obeying the law. Often Stoics refer to justice as morality because it encompasses all our interactions with one another. Ever played a video game at a friend's house, and when you're winning, your friend ends the game? Or played ball in the street, and the owner of the ball, losing, takes the ball and goes home, ending the game for everyone? These situations happen when we're children, but they explain well the stoic virtue of justice, to act impartially, even when we are the losers or disadvantaged. Of the four stoic virtues, Marcus Aurelius said that justice was the most important. For him, it was, the source of all other virtues. Therefore, it is one of the hardest virtues, to assess and act in a situation, being fair and impartial, even when we are the disadvantaged. Stoicism teaches that all people are valuable and meant to work together. Chrysippus provides part of this idea in the following quote, He who is participating in a race should strive, exert himself to the utmost of his ability to come out victorious, but it is wholly wrong to trip up or push his competitor. In life, therefore, it is not unjust for someone to seek for himself what may result in his benefit, but it is not right to take it from other people. In this example, and in life, we are always competing, always striving to achieve our goals and dreams. But we must ensure that this competition is fair. We should push ourselves to the maximum to get promoted or obtain a better position, but not by undercutting others. We have the right to have genuine relationships, but not by building our happiness on betrayals and the unhappiness of others. We can prosper financially, but this should occur without deceiving or exploiting others' work. The Stoics themselves define justice as honesty, fairness, fair play, goodwill, benevolence, and kindness. Being just to friends, to those we sympathize with, and the people we love is relatively easy, but it becomes difficult with our enemies or those whose voices we can't stand to hear. It's a Stoic maxim that no one is willingly bad. Those who insult us or steal are doing so because they believe they are doing something good for themselves. Epictetus said that a Stoic should be patient, kind, attentive, and compassionate, even with those who are misinformed and err in dealing with important matters. The Roman Stoic philosopher Musonius Rufus described justice as, honoring equality, wanting to do good, and for a person, being human, not wanting to harm human beings. This is the most honorable lesson and transforms those who learn it into people. Lastly, when we talk about justice, the Stoics also believed in the power of distribution, distributing to others exactly what they deserve. This can be very positive, ensuring that people are treated with dignity and respect. But it also involves ensuring that criminals receive what they are due, which has resonated in today's legal justice systems. For the Stoics, justice is the morality behind how we act, serving to focus our actions on improving the whole, not just ourselves. Practicing justice means treating others as we would like to be treated and upholding our responsibilities towards our fellow human beings, whether they are family, friends, or strangers. Temperance Or moderation is about controlling desires. Temperance is the opposite of excess. It can be divided into self-control, appropriateness, and modesty. The Stoics viewed life as a banquet. Imagine you win an all-you-can-eat buffet for a day, completely free. Will you serve yourself only what you need to satisfy your hunger, or will you eat without limits? How will you act? Epictetus used this banquet metaphor to explain to his students that someone who can exercise self-control in front of a banquet with unlimited food and drink would be fit to govern with the gods. That is, if we are capable of governing our desires, we can govern anything. Temperance is about the right amount, neither lack nor excess, but balance. Doing the right thing, in the right amount, in the right way. Because, as Aristotle told us, we are what we repeatedly do, therefore, excellence is not an act, but a habit. If we want to be more moderate people, we need to develop habits in our day-to-day -day that allow this to happen. For the Stoics, temperance means understanding that having what is necessary is the true sense of abundance. They also saw temperance as synonymous with self-control, not only in material goods but in all situations, maintaining balance in sadness or happiness, when admired or despised, in success or failure. 
Temperance helps us avoid extremes, showing that we should not depend only on moments of happiness and pleasure to be happy, nor let moments of pain and sadness destroy us. Justice, temperance, courage, and wisdom are a set of ethical virtues that instruct us on how to live well. Ethics, in Stoicism, deals with what is good and what is bad, what we should do and what we should try not to do, what are correct actions, what we value, and what we do not value. In one of his letters, Seneca describes Stoicism in the following way. No school has more kindness and gentleness, none has more love for human beings nor more concern for the common good. The goal assigned to us is to be useful, to help others, and to care not only for ourselves but for everyone in general and each person in particular. It can be difficult to identify our own faults. We do not have the aid of a stoic teacher who can point out our weaknesses and push us to be better. Nor can we sit in Epictetus' lectures and absorb his straightforward and simple knowledge. However, we can think and question ourselves as Seneca describes, are we becoming people who fit his description? If yes, we are doing a great job. And, we must continue. The ancient Stoics, from the founder of Stoicism, Zeno of Sidium, to Marcus Aurelius, used these four virtues as a guide for their actions, a compass to point them in the right direction during difficulties or times of confusion. For the Stoics, virtue is the only path to true happiness. They teach us that every situation we encounter, whether positive or negative, offers us the chance to practice temperance, courage, justice, and wisdom. This means that everything we experience can be seen as an opportunity to grow and become better. And, if we act with virtue, everything else important will happen. When we do our best, we not only change ourselves but also affect the environment around us and motivate others to change. In the words of Epictetus, seeking the best in ourselves means actively caring for the well-being of other human beings. And if you have made it this far, comment, gratitude. Thus, you confirm your process of change. Also, take the opportunity to share this video with a friend who needs it. Thank you for watching.